Uh, good morning or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, yesterday you read about some of the ancient early people that came to what is now North America. And you read about a couple that would settle in what is uh, in Mexico now. And at first, as you read, as you can see on this page, oh, let me click back on that. Starting here, you read about a lot of the first people that came to North America were um, hunter-gatherers, meaning they would hunt for their food, they would find vegetables anywhere they can. But they were able to hunt that way because they would get larger animals, like woolly mammoths, uh, mastodons. They look kind of like elephants, but they're a lot bigger. But then as the, the climate started to warm up, um, those large animals went away, so people didn't have as much to hunt. So now they had to change the way they lived, and they started to spend more time farming. And now they're farming and growing their own food. They're staying in one place. So we're starting to see one of the vocab words you read yesterday and highlighted civilizations. So you're starting to see cities, towns, these civilizations form where people are going to be living and working together. Uh, about 12,000 B.C., you can see right here. B.C., that's... Uh, in this time period, they were looking at about 3,200 years ago. The Olmec civilization started in the southern part of what is now Mexico. And you can see the picture you read here. One of, Actually, this is from the Mayans, so ignore that picture for right now. Um, but the Olmecs did a lot. So they started, today we know them as kind of being the first to make chocolate. So if you like chocolate, we owe that to the Olmecs. Olmecs used uh, a calendar, and they were kind of the first people in North America to start understanding there's something as zero, like meaning nothing, zero. The other group you read about is the Mayans. So the Mayans were uh, started forming around the same area that the, the Olmec did in Mexico and then Central America. So I have a map right here, and Central America and Mexico, this is this area right here. Mexico is this country right here. Central America are these little countries right in here. So that's where you're seeing the Olmecs and the Mayans starting to form. The Maya, Maya became a very powerful uh, civilization. They used calendars. Uh, they understood the stars. They created a writing system called hieroglyphics. Or hieroglyphs, sorry, hieroglyphics. That's uh, something else. The hieroglyphs. And they started to understand math a little bit more. Um, they did build pyramids. So here is an example in this picture right here that I mentioned earlier. This is a, a Mayan temple. So they and they built these temples. Then they'd have their cities and towns um, around those temples. And over time, some of these large cities grew too big. Um, so people had to spread out more to try to find food. So people started moving away. And as that happened, the Mayan people, the Mayan Empire slowly lost its power and but there are still mayans today just not really cities like we have now in 2007 i was able to go on a mission trip to a country called belize um, a mission trip is where you go to a different country or you could even stay in your own country where you go to help other people so i was taking this mission trip to belize which is down here in this little country right here it's this grayish color there so I took a mission trip to Belize. Belize is considered a third world country, meaning there's not a lot of money there, um, not a lot of money, and, and just some people have money, but their houses and places they live in aren't always the best. So I was going down on this mission trip to help people um, in, with a church. I was going there to help a church, and we were going to help build them a place where they could have Sunday school. And so when I went there, uh, one thing you can see in this truck, I have this picture of a truck. It's nothing special. But I always put it in there because there's these bottles of water back there. One thing about third world countries is they might not have the same systems that we have here. Like when we drink water here, water has gone through different systems and been cleaned out. Down in Belize, they don't always have that. So if we were to drink water from their faucets, we could get sick because it might have things in it. Uh, down from down there that aren't in our water up here in the United States. So we had to make sure anytime we were going to drink water, we had to drink bottled water like this. We could take showers and stuff like that with their water. We just didn't want to drink a lot of it. It could give us stomach problems like throwing up, diarrhea, that kind of stuff. 
So in these third world countries, it's very important. They can drink the water there because their bodies are used to it. Ours wouldn't be. Oh, that's my dog. So here in Belize, our first spot we stayed at was at a hotel here in a city called, um, oh, I don't remember, I think it was called Independence. Now this is, again, more evidence that it, they do things different than we do. This is the hotel we stayed at. This, these bars sticking out are called rebar. They put that in concrete to make it a little bit stronger. Well, you can see they're sticking straight up. There's no hand railings there. In the United States, there's no way we would be allowed to stay in a hotel like this. But they have different rules and laws down there. So this is where we stayed. The wrong way again. Um, at the hotel, oh, be smarter than the technology. All right, so here at the hotel we stayed at, it did have a little restaurant here. So you can see it's very common for their roofs, roofs up here, roofs, to have a thatched uh, ceiling like that. So because, you know, they're in a tropical climate. It's going to be warm. They're not dealing with snow and that kind of stuff like we have here. So that was the stairs leading up to the restaurant. There you can see that this one does have railings. So at the church, we are going to help. This is my father and myself and some other lady that was with us. This is outside the church. We were going there to help build their Sunday school and do some other things. So that's outside that church. This is inside the church. These are some other people. This was my pastor of my church at the time. And then this was the pastor of that church that we were helping. Not a lot of money, as I said. So they don't have a lot of money for air conditioning. So up here is their air conditioning, this built-in fan. This is my dad and myself at the front of that uh, church that we were at. And I forgot to mention earlier, if you want to look at any of these pictures longer, just pause the video and you can look at them longer. So uh, this is a blurry picture, not the best picture. So I go through some of these. That is my dad and some of our other people we went with. As I said earlier, it's a tropical place, so jungle, very hot, very humid. That's why I look so grumpy. I'm not somebody that likes to deal with the heat. So that's a very hot and humid place for me. And more of the different fans they had on top of the the ceiling there. And this is what the inside of my hotel room looked like. So nothing fancy. I mean, very similar to some of the stuff you'd see here. You know, comfy beds, a TV. I was able to watch some. They have some cable TV down there. This is inside that uh, restaurant. And uh, it's a bar restaurant type place. They had Coke. I always drank Orange Fanta. That was my favorite drink they had back then. But down here is this payphone. When I was down there, a hurricane was coming through, and hurricanes have a name. This one was Hurricane Dean, and it was coming close. So we knew a hurricane was heading for us. So I, I wanted to call my mom to let her know, hey, this is what's going on, because my mom wasn't with it. It was just my dad and I. And I said, here, this is what's going on. I talked to her for about five minutes or so. That five-minute call from Belize back to Minnesota cost me $90 for a five-minute phone call. But it was worth it to let my mom know what was going on. I'm going back. You can see the, the thatched roof up here again. That's from the inside of what it looked like. And here's just the outside of where my hotel room was. It was this first door here. You can see some more of that rebar sticking out. These are just kind of what some of the land looks like. Uh, here is the mountains in the distance. I just thought this was a cool picture of what Belize looks like. Now, as I said earlier, a hurricane was coming. Where we started, we were right on the coast of Belize. Let me find this picture again. We were right on the coast. That was dangerous for us to be there when a hurricane was coming. They didn't want us right by the water. So we moved inland to the capital city that's called Belmopan. So we moved. So we, had to, we were going to spend the whole week at that church. But when the hurricane was coming towards us, they said, we have to move. So we moved to a place that was a little bit uh, farther inland, so a little bit farther away from the Caribbean Sea down there. And we, this is where we stayed at the hotel. So this was the second spot, excuse me, the second spot that we stayed. Um, so this is where we were when the hurricane came through. It came through at night. To me, it was just like a bad thunderstorm. I woke up once, looked outside the window, ah, raining, thunder, lightning, I went to bed. Nothing that big a deal because we were in the southern part. The hurricane is like, think of a circle. The southern part of that circle of the hurricane as it's spinning isn't the worst. The northern part is where the hurricane is usually the roughest. And this place did have a pool. 
but we never swam in that pool. It just, mm. And this is my dad and another friend of us I went with. His name was Matt. This is just a river that was flowing by our hotel. So you can see how hot and humid it was there, and you can see the palm trees. So definitely a tropical climate. So there I am. A little, I'm actually smiling, which is weird. But, yeah, and all the, the men that went on this trip, there's only like four of us. We all had matching hats. So here we are. We decided we're going to, since we didn't couldn't go back to the first church we wanted to help because of the hurricane, we decided we were going to go to a different church to help. Um, so this is me. This is, uh, Joseph, this is Joshua here. So while uh, some people are helping with the church, I, uh, knowing I was going in to teach, this was actually my first, after my first year at Willow. I went on this mission ship. So I was helping the kids, playing with the kids. And uh, this is Joshua here, and you're just having some fun. And one other thing we did when the hurricane came through is we decided after we were going to help this gentleman. Uh, I don't know if you can see him in the picture. We were helping him build his house. This is where he was going to live. So we were helping just basically taking these sticks going across here and having other sticks going on top and we just tie them together to make his walls. So again, they're not worried about winter. So they're not worried about keeping warm. It's just a matter of trying to keep the, the rain and stuff out. So this to him was a very nice uh, house. So we were able to put the roof on and everything. And so we were able to help a gentleman make this. So very, some very poor living conditions. You know, some people when the hurricane came through, they had mud, dirt floors. So now they had muddy floors. So it was just poor living conditions for some of those people. Here again are some other kids I was playing with. The one on the bottom here, this is Josiah. Uh, and Josiah was having a lot of fun at my expense. He was pretending he could not speak English. But so he was talking to me in Spanish the whole time, and I was trying to understand a little bit, but he was a little sneaky. Then I did find out some adult told me, no, he speaks English just fine, the little sneak. So and then we, before we left, we moved to our third and final hotel before it was time to fly away. And this is just what our third hotel looked like. Now this picture, sorry, it's, it's crooked. So here is actually the bottom of the picture and the top. This is of a Mayan ruin. So when a Mayan leader would die, they would be buried. So down here would be where he was buried. And they would be buried with things that were important to them, different artifacts that were important to that leader. So here it is the right way. Apparently I fixed it and I forgot I did. My apologies. So this is what it would have looked like. So you can see here's where the remains would have been of the, the leader. They would have had carvings and things like that in honor of the Mayan leader. Wow. So it's been a while since I've shown these pictures. This is actually our final hotel. Sorry, that one before. That was, uh, that was our third hotel that we stayed at. This was our final one before we flew home. So a little bit nicer hotel. Now I went, one thing we got to do is go spend time at a Mayan ruin. And so we got to see where a Mayan uh, city had been built. So this here is one place where some Mayan people would have lived. This is the outside of it. And then continuing into the Mayans, they would have open fields here and around them is where they would build their structures. Now the structure right across here with the steps, it was built in levels. So the first, this is where the ruler of that city would have lived. So the ruler would have lived down here. When he died, he would have been buried inside his home with different artifacts. Then it's sealed up. Then the next level up here is where the next ruler would have lived. So they would have just built their homes just building up like that. And in the middle of this field, is it's very echoey. So you can stand on one end and not have to yell very loud, and they can hear you on the other. And on there is where they, they played a game where it was two teams playing against each other. And if your team won and you were the leader, you were the captain of that team, you would have been sacrificed to the gods. And I know that sounds weird, but the Mayans believed in different steps. You had, after you died, you had the underworld that you had to go through. There were several levels of the underworld. And then after that, you made it to heaven. If you were sacrificed, so your team won and you were sacrificed as the winning captain, it meant you got to skip the underworld part and go straight to heaven. So they were happy to, to, for that. This is that building that I showed you at the start from the side. This is the front of it. Archaeologists have gone from the top and they've dug down and found different artifacts from the Mayans. And then they seal it back up. So the Mayans were very impressive, the structures that they could build. This is looking from that field that I just told you about. 
to another. And this over here is a, a temple. So this is where the Mayans uh, worship their gods and things like that. So I'll show you a different picture of that one a little bit later. Here is my dad in front of some of the structures the common people would live in. So you can see these are their houses in the background where they would have lived in. So again, a reminder, if you want to see any of these pictures longer, just pause the video. This is me in front of that temple that I was just telling you about. These boxes represent the different levels of the underworld. So this is where they would have their religious services, the Mayans and stuff like that. So we were taking a tour that day. Here I am starting to go up this. Over here you can see the path. Over here there's some railings there. You can go up to the top of that temple. And here I am looking at that the place telling you where the, the leaders were buried over here. That was that field where they played the game. This is the area where some lived. There would be buildings also throughout the jungle where some of the Mayans lived. This is my dad and I standing on top of the temple. You can see how big these, built, these places were that the Mayans built. Just another picture of us there looking down at some of the homes that the Mayans used. So again, out in the jungle over here, there would have been other structures where the Mayan people would have lived. Now, where we're standing on here, this was actually used as a place for Mayans to communicate with each other. They'd build fires on here, and they'd use that to communicate. They'd use, they learned how to use different color smoke, so it's their way of communicating with other Mayan villages in the area. Here we are just looking at the side of another Mayan structure. Now, this here is just a picture of a monkey hanging down. Now, another place we did when we were there, we had a day where we were tourists. One day we went and looked at the Mayan ruins. Another day we went to a place where a lot of farmers had gotten together and set apart land for these monkeys to have a safe place to live. This is not here. I didn't take any pictures when I was there. This is somebody had one at their, in, by a restaurant we stopped at. But this place where we were, we went on a tour of this place where all these monkeys were. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And it was cool. A whole family of monkeys came down. It's called a troop of monkeys. And what was really neat is that we could feed them bananas. So we'd have babies coming down, grabbing bananas from our hand. And I can honestly say now that I've been peed on by a baby monkey. So as I was feeding them uh, uh, bananas, I felt water. What I thought was water coming down. I looked up, baby monkey above me. Sure enough, was peeing on my shoulder. So that was kind of cool to, to visit with those. But then our group started leaving, and it was just me, my dad, and our guide, and one other guy. And the monk, there's one male monkey just getting really loud and mad. And our guide said, we should leave now. When it's a larger group, we're okay. But when we get smaller like this, the alpha male might get mad and think we're you know, threatening his people, or his, monk, his, uh, his troop, his monkeys, not his people. <laughs> uh, so we had to leave before you know, we got in any trouble. That's just a lizard we saw, a lot of lizards running around the jungle. And then, then just on the way back, we were flying from Belize to Miami. We had some problems with our plane, the, the flaps, the part that kind of go up and down on the wings. We're having some issues, and they said, oh, we, we could have problems. So they had the fire trucks and everything ready for us. And then there's just some more pictures of the fire truck. So, again, thank you for listening. Um, so that's just a little bit about Belize and the, the Mayan people that you read about yesterday. Um, so oh, I'm going to make sure I'm looking at the right spot. So that's what you're doing today is these pictures. Tomorrow we will uh, finish reading that lesson. So make sure you're checking the classwork page for tomorrow. Again, email me or contact me with any questions. Uh, thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.